Good evening. How are you tonight? Get ready for our class here in a moment. First, a little bit of valor. Take a drop of that. Nice drop and put it right on the brain stem. I like doing this before every class. It's a lot of fun. It smells great. Ah, love valor. And the next oil I put on is White Angelica. White Angelica is a fantastic blend and it's really used for, well, for feeling good. That's, yeah, it's kind of a overall protection kind of thing. So I put that on the forehead, the temples, the crown of the head and all around. And the music this evening, one of Norway's great composers, Edvard Grieg. And that's the uh, Peer Gint Suite Number 1, Opus 46. Um, yeah, a lot of people associate that song with morning and dawn. Well, you can consider this kind of the dawn of a new day for you if you are into toxin-free living. But before we get on with that, let me introduce myself. My name is Jay Hawk. My wife, Lori, and I are Young Living Independent Distributors. We work with Young Living Essential Oils, specifically Young Living. No other oils do we use. And we have our own little business called Soaring Hawk Essential Oils. And there's Lori's creepy computer telling me it is 7 o'clock. So I have to start off by saying this. The information in this class is not meant to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease. The information represents what I, an independent distributor of Young Living Essential Oils, have chosen to do to take charge of my own personal health and that of my family. These statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. If you are pregnant, nursing, taking medication, or have a medical condition, consult your physician before using these products. So, we are talking today about toxin-free living. Really, how safe is your home? Take a look. How safe is your home? Danger, toxic chemicals, gas mask. Yeah, you know, the. It's, it's horrible. The stuff that is in your home can kill you. I'm, I'm just, I'm not going to sugarcoat it at all. There is some bad stuff out there and it's allowed in your home. First and foremost, let's take a look at some of the big baddies when it comes to hidden and not so hidden toxins in your home, many which you probably use daily. Okay, let's talk uh, 2-butoxyethanol, uh, 2-butoxyethanol, otherwise known as ethylene glycol. It's widely used in spray lacquers, quick dry lacquers, enamels, varnishes, latex paints, paint thinners, strippers, uh, varnish removers, agriculture chemicals, herbicides, silicone caulks, cutting oils, and hydraulic fluids, fabric dyes, and inks as well. Industrial and household cleaners. It's used as a floor degreaser in many restaurants, and it's also used in dry cleaning compounds. It's also used in liquid soaps and cosmetics, constant exposure to 2-butoxyethanol um, uh, has been shown to cause irritation to the nose and the eyes. Headache, a metallic taste in the mouth, vomiting, the sweet flavor and aroma of antifreeze and engine coolants. Using ethylene glycol has called, caused many children, as well as pets, to mistake it for a juice drink, and it causes severe internal problems. Another one that you probably don't think of as a bad one, but it is, in some cases, not all, but ammonia. Think about it, ammonia. It's found in glass cleaners, oven cleaners, bathroom and toilet cleaners, Lots of cleaning products have ammonia in it. Some even boast about having ammonia in it. Now, natural ammonia is very important. It's important to plant, animal, and human life. It's found in water, it's found in soil, it's found in the air, and it's a source of much needed nitrogen for plants and animals. Most of the ammonia in the environment 
comes from the natural breakdown of manure and dead plants and animals. That's nature. That's just a fact. That is natural ammonia. Conversely, large amounts of industrial ammonia can be found in a variety of household cleaning products. Toxic effects of ammonia are irritation to skin, eyes, mouth, respiratory system, and digestive tract. Large amounts of ammonia can cause chemical burns to the skin, to the eyes, and if inhaled, to the lungs. It can lead to blindness, lung disease, and even death. That's something that's in so many products that are probably under your sink right now. Another big baddie, chlorine bleach. We've all grown up with chlorine bleach being a part of our laundry room. Well, guess what? Chlorine bleach is a strong corrosive material. We pretty much knew that. It's going to irritate your eyes, skin, and even the respiratory tract just by inhaling some of the gases from chlorine bleach. It can cause bloody noses, neurological disorders, headaches, and death. Household bleach can cause pulmonary edema, vomiting, and also, if ingested, it can cause people to lapse into a coma. If swallowed, it is corrosive and will permanently damage the mouth and throat and can prove to be fatal. That's chlorine bleach. A lot of people have that in their laundry room. I know we did growing up. And every time my mom would use it, it would be, you know, you, uh, you could tell it wasn't good for you. But we used it because we were told, use it. Another big baddie, you find this one all over, triclosan. Triclosan can be found in everyday products like antibacterial soaps. You know, like the, the soft soaps that you use. And yeah, it's antibacterial. Well, it also has triclosan in it, and triclosan is not a good thing. You can find it in detergents, shampoos, and toothpastes. Now, according to the Mayo Clinic, Mayo Clinic, very well-respected medical research lab, recent studies have raised questions about whether triclosan might be hazardous to human health. Research has shown that triclosan alters hormone regulation. It might contribute to the development of antibiotic-resistant germs. That's what happens with when you use uh, you know, some of these antibacterial soaps and stuff. The germs outsmart it, and then you're left with these super germs. It could be harmful to the immune system. Now, when you get a product containing triclosan, you can absorb a small amount through your skin or in the mouth. A 2008 study, which was di uh, designed to assess exposure to triclosan in a representative sample of U.S. children and adults, found triclosan present in the urine of nearly 75% of those tested. That's a pretty high mark. That's a very high percentage there. And recently, the U.S. government decided that it was time to ban triclosan from shampoos. Now, they had a couple years to, to work on that, too. It wasn't just, nope, got to stop now. It's like, now nah, we're going to give you a couple years so you can kind of phase it out. But, yeah, they took it out of shampoos, but they did not say they had to take it out of toothpastes. So think about it. Something that they deem bad to go on your scalp because it could cause problems is okay to brush your teeth with. Really? Come on. Get with that. That's, that's a no-brainer right there. That, that really is. Another bad one, sodium lauryl sulfate, SLS. It's found in mouthwash, shampoo, soap, makeup, as well as industrial grease cutters and floor cleaners. How nice. Yeah, that's wonderful. The same stuff you put on a, you know, on a floor to chemically remove stains, they're putting in your shampoo and your soap. Wonderful. It's banned in Europe and Canada and it's been shown to cause hair loss, rashes, and even cataracts. It's not good. Undiluted SLS can cause skin and eye irritation as well as nausea, vomiting, and diarrhea if ingested. And you all know that's not fun. Not by a long shot. 
Sodium lauryl sulfate is often contaminated with 1,4-dioxane, which is a byproduct of the manufacturing process that is possibly carcinogenic to humans. And it may also cause negative effects in the kidneys, the liver, and the central nervous system. Okay, that's sodium lauryl sulfate. You find that in shampoos. Every shampoo pretty much has that that comes off the, the grocery store shelves. Let's talk about deodorants. Wow, deodorants are another one that you wouldn't think, hey, yeah, it makes me smell good. Well, guess what else it does? Is your deodorant toxic? There are five big ones in deodorants that you got to watch out for. Parabens. They disrupt our delicate hormonal balance, which can lead to things like early puberty in children and an increased risk of hormonal cancers. It's linked to birth defects and organ toxicity. Phthalates, linked to a higher risk of birth defects, may disrupt hormone receptors. It increases the likelihood of cell mutation. And that's not a good thing. Yeah, it's fun in the movies to see mutants, but no. No, you don't want cell mutation going on in your own body. Triclosan. We already talked about that. Classified as a pesticide by the FDA. Classified as a probable carcinogen by the EPA, the Environmental Protection Agency. Propylene glycol can cause damage to the central nervous system, liver, and heart. And aluminum. Aluminum. You would think it's all over the place, but aluminum powder is, is horrible. It's linked to breast cancer in women, prostate cancer, and an increased risk of Alzheimer's disease. That's just what's in your deodorant. Now, let's talk about something called volatile organic compounds. They're also known as VOCs because it's just easier to say VOC than volatile organic compounds. They are carbon-based chemicals that easily become vapors or gases, and they spread in the atmosphere. VOCs are present in hairspray, perfumes, colognes, aerosol air fresheners, adhesive remover, spray paint, paint stripper, nail polish, and lots of other everyday household items. Now sources can be liquid or solid with short and long-term adverse health effects. A few VOC related health issues are headaches, loss of concentration and coordination, nausea, eye, nose, and throat irritation, there's no way to make that sound like fun, is it? No. Another big baddie on the list, phthalates. I mentioned phthalates when we were talking about deodorants, but here it is. They're used in cosmetics, personal care products, perfume, hairspray, soap, shampoo, nail polish, skin moisturizers. They are used in consumer products such as flexible plastic and vinyl toys as well. Shower curtains, wallpaper, vinyl mini blinds, food packaging, plastic wrap. All that has phthalates in it. Major health hazards of phthalates, premature birth, birth defects of male sex, sex organs, reduced fertility, prostate and testicular cancer, learning disabilities, behavior problems, asthma and allergies, early puberty in girls, breast growth in boys, obesity and diabetes. Now, according to the National Toxology Program, Phthalates are listed as reasonably anticipated to be a human carcinogen. Again, that's not a good thing. You want to stay away from things that are a human carcinogen. Air fresheners. Ooh, that's a doozy. I mean, come on, who hasn't seen the commercials where they, they spray the can and little flowers appear and birds and chipmunks start singing? We've all seen that. But, you know, the EPA has noted repeatedly that one ingredient in many air fresheners is formaldehyde, which is classified by the International Agency for Cancer Research as a group one carcinogen. It should be noted that such a designation is reserved for those substances that have been shown by research to definitively cause cancer in human beings. Yeah, that stuff you're spraying in the bathroom after, after a steak dinner, well, guess what? That's doing more harm to you than the steak dinner did. It's just not good. The EPA also notes that air fresheners release what is called the volatile organic compounds. There's that phrase again. We've heard it, the VOCs. 
which cause eye, nose, and throat irritation, headache, loss of coordination and concentration, nausea, liver, kidney, and central nervous system damage, allergic skin reactions, um, also shortness of breath, decline in, in so many um, in levels of the body, amesis, vomiting, uh, epistaxis, nosebleeds, fatigue, visual disorders, memory impairment, all that from floral fresh. Right, right. Speaking of that, something that's kind of related to air fresheners, candles. Yeah, you would think candles. Got them all over the place. Light them up. Smells great. Yeah. Most candles are made of paraffin wax, which creates highly toxic benzene and toluene, or uh, toluene, and that's when they are burned. That's what comes off of it. Both are known carcinogens. In fact, the toxins released from paraffin candles are the same found in diesel fuel. Yeah. The diesel fuel fumes that you smell, same stuff that's coming off of those candles. On top of that, many scented candles also have wicks that contain heavy metals like lead, and even a few hours of burning them can create levels of airborne heavy metals that are much higher than the acceptable limits. Many candles also contain artificial scents and dyes, which release additional chemicals when burned. I know. I know, we grew up with these things. We've had them in our houses for years. We didn't know that they were hurting us. Now we do. How about pesticides? Yeah, that's a big one. Pesticides are the only toxic substances released intentionally into our environment to kill things. This includes substances that kill weeds, like herbicides, bugs, like insecticides, and fungus, fungicides, and so on. Exposure to pesticide residues on vegetables and fruits can double a child's risk of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, ADHD. That's a condition that can cause inattention, hyperactivity, and impulsivity in children. Yeah, and that's also been overdiagnosed by a lot of doctors, but there is a lot of it going on too. It's also been linked to autism for children or women exposed to, um, to these pesticides have also experienced health issues. Pesticides have been linked to a wide range of human health hazards, ranging from short-term impacts such as headaches and nausea to chronic impacts like reproductive harm, endocrine disruption, nerve, skin, and eye irritation and drainage, uh, damage, headaches, dizziness, nausea, fatigue, uh, systemic poisoning can also be experienced. Pesticides can cause many types of cancer, including leukemia, non-Hodgkin's lymphoma, brain, bone, breast, ovarian, prostate, testicular, and liver cancers. Yeah, can, is there a way to make that sound like a good thing? No, not in the least. And of course, you've got the, uh, the herbicide Roundup. Everyone's heard of Roundup? Well, Roundup has been sued by several people, the company, Monsanto, that makes Roundup, and several courts have awarded millions of dollars to people who have legitimately contracted cancer. And the courts say it's because of Roundup. That's pretty scary. How about something we're all familiar with, laundry detergent and fabric softeners? Yeah, you would think, hey, this is what we use to clean our clothes. Guess what? It's not the best for you. Scented petroleum-based laundry detergents can contain high levels of VOCs, the volatile organic compounds. These chemicals are linked to asthma and cancer. They add to indoor air pollution and can be absorbed through your skin. 83.33% of fabric softeners get a D or F rating from the Environmental Working Group. Dryer sheets are among the worst offenders. They don't really soften our clothes. What they do is they coat our clothes with a thin layer of slimy chemicals, which make the clothes feel softer, but they're not really softer. The most common softening chemicals are called 
quaternary ammonium compounds, quats for short. The Association of Occupational and Environmental Clinics, which is a leading international authority on asthma, calls these quats asthmagens, since they can cause asthma to develop in otherwise healthy people. I know you're there. I saw you. I heard you. And you're just in time for makeup. Makeup. Makeup is one of the biggest. A lot of women like to use makeup daily, and some apply it rather liberally. But do you know what's hidden in your blush, your lipstick, your eyeliner? Toxic chemicals. Parabens. Parabens are in there. These are estrogen disruptors that are linked to breast cancer and reproductive issues. Talc. Yeah. Linked to ovarian and lung cancers. The stuff we used to dump yep. all over our babies. That's right. Bismuth. Bismuth. It's a heavy metal that chemically resembles arsenic and can cause skin irritation and acne. It's most often found in mineral makeup. Phthalates, there's that word again. Phthalates, endocrine disruptors linked to developmental and reproductive toxicity, as well as cancer, asthma, ADHD, and male fertility issues. It's classified as a probable human carcinogen by the EPA. Nanoparticles. There's something, teeny tiny little particles, nanoparticles, they're really, really small, and they're small enough to cross through the skin and enter the bloodstream, where they can cause DNA and cell function damage, brain damage, and liver damage. Petrochemicals, okay, petro, petroleum, there you go. These are chemically, uh, chemical products derived from petroleum and are linked to anemia, kidney degeneration, and nerve damage to the brain and the spinal cord. How about fragrance? There's that word, fragrance. Yeah, a lot of, lot of things you see has fragrance on the ingredient label. That's a code word. That's a cover word for makeup, candles, soap, and other manufacturers. They can use the term fragrance and claim that they don't have to list all the ingredients because it's a trade secret, so they can just put fragrance and cover up a lot of toxic chemicals. But it sounds so nice. I know, it does, but it's not. It's not, when you see fragrance marked as an ingredient, most likely, now not all the time, mind you, because there are some that use natural fragrances, but most likely, it's a variety of synthetic and toxic chemicals. So what can we do? Plenty, plenty. There are a lot of things we can do. We can get those toxins out of our house by using safe products. Yes, Young Living has a wide variety of safe plant-based products, but you can make your own quite easily. Uh, if you're going to clean your mirrors and glass, instead of using something that's got ammonia in it, use some newspaper with diluted vinegar, like a 50 to 1 diluted uh, thieves cleaner. That's a good one with water. So there you go. Toxin free. Sinks and bathrooms. Try a half cup of baking soda, a few drops of rosemary, eucalyptus, lemon, or tea tree essential oil. About three quarters of a cup of vinegar, a couple cups of hot water. Combine that, pour it into a bottle. There you go, you got a spray bottle to help clean your sinks and bathrooms. It's fantastic. Toilets, put a little vinegar and lemon essential oil in there. That works. Furniture polish, you can make that too. There are so many things that are bad in furniture polish. Two cups of water, a tablespoon of olive oil, a tablespoon of vinegar, three drops of lemon, pine, or rosemary essential oil. There you go, furniture polish. An all-purpose cleaner. Try three parts of water, one part vinegar, teaspoon of lemon juice tossed in there, five to seven drops of thieves or lemon essential oil. You got yourself an all-purpose cleaner. How about household cleaners? You got a favorite? These. You mean this? Mm -hmm. Well, actually, no, that's too strong. I did dilute it about yep. 50 times or so. Yeah, so when you see a bottle like this, this can make, like, 
you know, anywhere from you know 24 to 42 bottles of whatever cleaner you want to make. Just a cap full or even less than a cap full can do it for a lot of things. It's really great. It's a powerful, all-purpose concentrated cleaner formulated with 100% plant and mineral-based ingredients. Steve's household cleaner is biodegradable and complies with all EPA standards. Good stuff. Really good stuff. And it's formulated with the power of Young Living's Thieves oil blend, so you can get a deep clean without dangerous or synthetic ingredients. So, again, you, you mix it up into different ratios, and you can clean every part of your house with it. How about something, you know, to, to take care of those um, uh, triclosan issues with your toothpaste? Mm. Yeah. Mm. How about Thieves Aroma Bright Toothpaste? Oh, yeah. Love that. Yeah. yeah. That's our ditch and switch. Mm -hmm. One of our early ditch and switches. It's, it's really good for your teeth and gums, and it's without the use of fluoride and synthetic dyes. One of the things I love about it, it's a one rinse toothpaste. You know, I've, I've mentioned this before where you, know, you use Colgate or Crest or one of those other leading brands of toothpaste, and you, you brush and brush, and then you go to rinse, you take your water, and mm -hmm. And you have to do that like five or six times to get that chemical peppermint flavor out of your mouth. That's not real peppermint, folks. That's, that's chemically enhanced. Well, with Thieves Aroma Bright Toothpaste, and they've got a couple other types too. With that, one rinse usually does it for me. One, because I don't mind the taste. So it's, it's really pretty good. It's got... Um, it's got uh, all kinds of uh, great essential oils in it, like clove and cinnamon bark and lemon and eucalyptus and rosemary. And um, something else that's really good that we have at every sink in the house, Thieves Foaming Hand Soap. Yeah. It's got thieves, lemon, and orange essential oils, lots of other natural ingredients in there as well. It's a very gentle and effective alternative to antibacterial uh, soaps that are just loaded with toxins. And this stuff, we get more compliments. Mm, when people, people love it. Yeah, when people come over and they go into our powder room, it's like, oh, I love the smell of that soap you got there. And we just tell them, hey, it's thieves. It's the good stuff. <laughs> we really enjoy that. For toiletries, beauty, skin care, there are all kinds of things on the market that claim to be 100% natural and 100% pure and all that. Well, if you find something like that, good on you, but check it out. Really check it out. We've checked out the Young Living products, and we found that their shampoos are wonderful. Their soaps are fantastic. What's the one you like? Is peppermint that and... Peppermint sandalwood? Is it sandalwood? I don't Is know. It... Peppermint and something. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Wonderful. Yep. And Great I, way to start the day. I love the uh, the Shutron bar soap is fantastic. The Valor bar soap I like. And uh, also Sacred Mountain bar soap. Smells divine. It's really good. So I'm actually hoping to get through one of my bars of soap so I can open up the Sacred Mountain bar soap. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's it's kind of nice when you look forward to trying some of these things. Um, Young well, Living. You know, yeah. some soaps, I mean, before we used Young Living, mm -hmm. you open up the soap drawer and <laughs> it kind of makes your nose kind of, you know, in here, it just kind of makes your nose hurt. Smart. Yeah, it's, it's, it's like walking by, like a, the, it's like going to the mall and walking by, you know, Bath and Body Works and you just, oh, you're, you're just yeah, overpowered by. We're more sensitive now that we, oh, definitely. Now that we smell pure things. More. Right. But deodorant, shower gel, shave oils, all kinds of good stuff. Uh, Skin care, lip gloss, makeup. Savvy Minerals. You want to I, tell them a little about what's Savvy? Oh, I won't use anything else. I love it. I love it. Yeah. I, I, I did not know how bad cosmetics were for you and some of the horrible ingredients in them. And um, I love Savvy Minerals. Even if it wasn't healthy, I would still love Savvy Minerals. I, <laughs> I, love, um, I love the foundation. It's a different concept for me to other than you know not using liquid makeup but using a spray and and a powder to brush it on and i i love it mm. they're coming out with more colors and 
I all, love it. all kinds of stuff. Yeah. It, it's great. And a lot of people who have used other so-called healthy uh, mineral-based makeups, they have switched and they say, nope, savvy. Well, They're using savvy minerals. There's a popular, a popular makeup brand that's known as... <laughs> I think the name mineral is in it, but it's um, <clears throat> it's been bought out, and it's not as pure as it used to be. Right, right. So with a lot of those companies, it's about the profit and not the person who's purchasing. Um, how would you like it, the home smell them nice? Do we like candles? Not so much anymore. And those that we do. We check them out to make sure they're like uh, toxin-free candles that have uh, wooden wicks and not the lead wicks. So yeah, we do burn the candles occasionally, but more than anything, we will use a diffuser. We'll put some essential oils, whatever aroma we'd like. If we want to have a citrusy kind of aroma in the kitchen, we'll pop in some lemon or some grapefruit or something like that. If we want to have a more romantic kind of aroma, uh, we can... Um, there, there are things like sensation oh, and yeah. <laughs> that's a different class entirely. Um, <laughs> but th there are oils that you can put in to enhance a mood. Um, a couple years ago, we like to use this as a reference. A couple years ago, uh, we hosted Thanksgiving for the family and our family is known to bicker and discuss politics and raise voices a little bit, but, but still on, in a mostly friendly way. Um, we diffused an oil blend called Harmony and everything ran smoothly. <laughs> no flare ups, no emotional outbursts. It was fantastic. So that's, that's our testimony for Harmony essential oil blend in the diffuser. Um, it's safe, it's effective, it purifies the air. It is just, I, I love diffusing. And like when you're, when you work from home, I usually put in like motivation or joy or something like that for you. And you say it helps. I miss not having a diffuser on my desk at work. Yeah. Well, we'll work on I that. can't really where I am now, but. We'll get you one of those little USB diffusers and you can like sneak that in your computer. Ah, uh, no. <laughs> the computer police would come and get me. Ah, uh, that's true. Yeah, I got to figure out something. So laundry, we talked about laundry and that's, that's one of the places that you know, people say, well, I have always used this brand of laundry detergent. I've always used dryer sheets. Guess what? We use this now. This is the best. Love it. Thieves laundry soap. Yeah, the bottle doesn't look that big, but it's ultra concentrated. Plant-based formula. It cleans without any chemical or synthetic residue. Natural enzymes are in here. Powerful essential oils add to the formula's strength. This is the best. And it smells good, too. Oh, it does. I mean, this, <laughs> this is just one of those things where you can, yeah. I mean, it doesn't smell mm. like your typical laundry detergent. I mean, this smells like, you know, you got some citrus in there. You got some cinnamon in there. You've got some really nice essential oils in there. And it works. I love the way the clothes smell when they come out of the washer. It really is nice. And then for, uh, for other stuff, instead of the dryer sheets, it's these. Yeah, wool dryer balls. These things are great. Yeah, you can even, uh, you can take a drop of, you know, a couple drops of essential oil. We use lavender a lot when we do our laundry. Some people use lemongrass. Uh, others even use lemon as well, but it really, it adds to the drying process and it doesn't leave all that nasty residue that the uh, synthetic dryer sheets and fabric softeners have. So it's really, really good to have that option of thieves, laundry soap, and wool dryer balls. Fabric softener, static reducer, yep, that's what the wool dryer balls do. So. We've talked a lot about chemicals that are in your cleaning products and, and stuff like that, but what about the chemicals that are in your food? The pesticides that we mentioned, those are horrid and those can really cause some damage. We've got a great little jug here. 
which I think we need to order another bottle of this. That is Thieves this Fruit and it. Veggie Soak. Every time I go shopping, I will take the fruit, <clears throat> like apples, grapes, whatever we happen to get, and I will put it in the sink and I will add some Thieves uh, Fruit and Veggie Soak on that. And believe me, the scuzz and scum that come to the top of the water. Yeah. If you want to really see how it works, get a white bowl and put a little bit of that in your bowl and put your mm -hmm. fruit in there to soak and see what the water looks like yeah, afterwards. Just like a cap full of it. So again, highly concentrated yeah. goes a long way. And man, that is that's nasty. I mean, think about it. You you've got people you've got people at the grocery store who it, it's not that they're bad people. It's just they're not very considerate when it comes to things. Like you've got, you know, Granny Goodnight out there um, going through the produce section, and she's testing the grapes. Well, as she's doing that, she's putting her fingers in her mouth, mm -hmm. and then she's reaching for another grape and putting that in her mouth. And then, and then she goes and she touches some other fruit. Or you've got the kid who's got a runny nose. Oh, says, <laughs> oh. And then goes to grab an apple, and Mom <laughs> says, put it back. <laughs> mm. Yeah, I had that happen. I was at the grocery store. I was in the produce aisle, and this kid sneezed all over the Granny Smith apples, which I was getting ready to purchase. <laughs> I was looking at them going, hey, there are a couple good Granny Smiths in there. Lori loves Granny Smith apples. I think I'll get some. I think I'll pass. And the mom, I, I told the mom, I was like, hey, you know, oh, Okay, well, bless you. And walked on. I told the produce person, and the produce person said, "Oh, okay, yeah, I'll I'll get someone to take care of that." Right. They weren't in a hurry. <laughs> right. So think about that. The next time you go to the grocery store and you're looking at all those fruits and veggies and you know grapes and strawberries and asparagus and all that fruit and veggie stuff that is out in the open for people to. Well, even if people aren't touching it, it's just that. Yeah. It's. The pesticides and dirt and stuff that gets exactly. on. So th what it boils down to, folks, is there are alternatives. You don't have to live a toxin-laden life. You can kick these things to the curb. You really can. You don't have to do it all at once. Do it one room at a time if you have to. Just get those toxins out from under the kitchen sink. Kick the harsh chemicals out of your bathrooms. Get rid of the scented candles and start diffusing essential oils. Ditch the dryer sheets. I have a hard time with that because I have to admit I love the way they feel. And I know it's not right, but it's, that's one that I'm just, okay, I'm, I'm not using it as much. I'm using the dryer balls I'm more. Hide them. Yeah. But I will tell you, though, they're great to use in the garage to get rid of mice. Yeah, that's what I do with the dryer sheets now. You can ditch those, use the wool dryer balls instead. It's your home. It's your family. It's your wellness. Start living a toxin-free lifestyle by saying no to phthalates, parabens, triclosan, and other toxic gunk. And say yes to natural, plant-based, toxin-free products. Young Living can help you do that. And we're here to help if you want to start living that life. What do you think? I think everybody should do it. Yeah, you I happy mean, about it? Very yeah. happy about it. I like I the mean. fact that you know when our kids come over, and our kids are grown now, and eventually there will be grandkids. We're not saying when, and we're not putting any pressure on our kids, but you know we are getting older. Um, <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no hurry. Considering only one of the three of them are married, uh, yeah, definitely no hurry. But we want to have a household where if a grandkid toddles into the kitchen and gets under the sink, we don't have to worry about causing damage to the child and having to cause poison, you know, call poison control. We want to have a house that is safe and healthy and people living in it that are healthy and well. So... If you want to live that toxin-free life, if you'd like to make a start with that, let us know. We'd be more than happy to help you out. Um, 
you can give us a call. You can you know post on here. You can uh, contact us on email. You know, however you want to see fit to contact us. Please make that change. Make that change because it'll be one of the best ones you ever made. You'll feel better. Yep. Now next week or next week there is no class, but um, Monday. May 6th is our next class. And that is going to be, what if you hosted a class and no one came? Gee, does that happen to people? Gosh, yes. <laughs> it does. So we're going to have that on Monday, May 6th. It's, uh, it's going to be a fun class, kind of a, you know, a, a humorous look at what could be a very depressing situation. So we're going to try to, you know, put a smile on your face about that. And then Monday, May 20th will be the class after that. And that's going to be, what's your why? What drives you? What inspires you? What makes you do the things you do? Use the products you use? Talk the way you do? What is your why? So we'll be talking about that on May 20th. And we'll have those classes posted up here in the information station events section. So take a look at that and find out what's coming up. And we will hope to see you on May 6th for what if you hosted a class and no one came. And speaking of classes, if you live in the Portland metro area, we would love to uh, have you show up for a sniff and sample event we're having which is where we're going to have our Young Living Essential Oils out, about 130 different singles and blends out there. And uh, we'll have some Einkorn grain products. Oh, Einkorn wheat is fantastic. There'll be Ningxia Red. The Ningxia Bar will be open. Uh, we'll do some Ningxia Zing as well, snacks and beverages that are infused with essential oils. Uh, we'll have like games, games and prizes and, and lots of fun. And uh, if, the last time we did it, it was a lot of laughs. We had a lot of laughs, people learned something, and still had fun doing it. So that's the way we try to do things, is we don't want to be preachy, and we don't want to you know, sound like a college professor, um, which by no means are we college professors, but we just want to let people know that there are alternatives out there, and you can have fun talking about them even about oils in the bedroom. You can still have fun talking about that, even though it is kind of embarrassing sometimes. So with that, <laughs> I'm just getting myself in a deeper and deeper trouble, aren't I? Uh, we will hope to see you on Monday, May 6th for the next class. And if you are interested in the sniff and sample, please let us know. We would love to see you here. And uh, we will uh, let you know the address and stuff uh, when you confirm that you're going to arrive. And that'll be fun. So until next time, there's my wife, Lori. I'm Jay Hawk. Take care. God bless. <laughs>